Hey guys, this is Alexei, and I'm here to basically show you how to rip sprites with GIMP because I know Photoshop is kind of expensive and some people don't want to pirate it. You know, so GIMP is a free tool and it basically helps you um, with image editing and you can use it for Mugen as well. So this is only my second time using it and I'm going to try to uh, show you how it's done in GIMP. Um, Alright, so basically I'm going to just open my sprite sheet uh, anything really sure data alright so like any amount of sprite ripping you have to basically take the unwanted colors out of the sheet that means effects and pretty much anything any colors you don't want in your palette and I'm going to start that so this header at the top I don't want or these portraits uh, I really don't care about this stuff either so delete that and delete these effects because I don't want them the clay effects I think I'm going to leave there because, you know, if I was going to create this character, even though I already have, um, I would probably want these to change color, you know, with palettes. It's up to you, though. Get rid of this. Actually, I'm, I'm only going to take a portion of this sheet because there's really no point in ripping an entire sheet for a tutorial. Um, Alright. So if I want to crop this, I just go to image and then uh, crop to selection um, now I'm going to take the eyedropper tool, take the background color and just to get rid of all this white text there's not a lot here but if there was this would really help um, and then I'm going to choose the select by color tool and get rid of <clears throat> first selected and then take the paint bucket tool fill whole selection background color selected and then fill that in and that basically cleans the sheet so now you can prepare it now in GIMP just like in Photoshop there's mode and then index and from here, you can use a custom palette, uh, use a web optimized palette. None of that really, none of that stuff really matters. All you need is generate optimum palette. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to go to Windows, Dockable Dialogs, and Color Map to see my my palette. This is basically what it created. Um, now, in order to in order for this to work in Mugen, the color zero or the background color needs to be in the right slot. Currently it's not, and I can see that. So I'm going to right click and click uh, a rearrange color map. Then I'm going to take that blue background color and move it to color zero. The idea is to drag and drop these colors around, but for some reason, for me, it's not working at all. Um, that might just be because I'm recording at the same time, and uh, maybe Camtasia is, um, I don't know, preventing this functionality from working, but uh, when I was using it and testing it before recording this video, it was working fine. So basically, you need to drag this background color into slot zero, so they reverse. Uh, so they switch themselves because uh, color zero is the background color and that's just what it has to be and this background color is blue so you would drag it there to make it blue and then uh, you click OK and I can close this now um, the next step is basically now that you have an indexed palette if you go to dockable dialogues and go to palettes you'll see that um, if you scroll up, it says color map from image number four 
they that uh, imported 15. This is the palette of the current image, and um, this is going to be useful for when you rip the sprites out. So I'm going to take the uh, rectangle select tool and press R, and I'm just going to select the first sprite. Now I'm going to um, copy and then Control shift v to paste the selection into a new document. And from here, all you need to do is go to Mode, Index it again, but this time, instead of Generate Optimum Palette, you use Custom Palette. You click this uh, little icon here to, to choose a palette. You scroll all the way up to the top and click Color Map of Image 4. And this is going to be the color map of your entire image out here. So you click Convert should be fine. Uh, you go to File, Export, and um, Export All Images. You should be able to just use a PNG. I don't think PCX is available here. But if it is available, then I would suggest you save it out as a PCX. Oh, there is. Alright, so you save it, as, save it out as a PCX. Um, I'm just going to put this on my desktop and stuff folder and call it Data1. PNG, I'll actually put this as PCX, export, it's done, close this, close without saving, uh, as you can see, if I open this in Photoshop, so here's the sprite that we cut out, as you can see it's indexed, and you can see the palette right here. and I'll close that. Alright, so for the next sprite, it's just as simple. I'm going to zoom in a bit. Press R for the rectangle marquee tool and make a box around it. Control C to copy, Control Shift V to paste in a new document or new window. Then go to Image Mode Indexed use custom palette and choose the color map of image number four or whatever uh, image number this is. For me it's number four, for you it's going to be something different and just make sure that you know it's the color map of your image out here, the main image. It'll tell you up here, you know, data imported 4.0 so I'm guessing like that's where it's getting those numbers from. Uh, and then you click convert and then file, export and zsoft pcx image you could also do a PNG if you want, because Fighter Factory 3 accepts PNGs, but um, you don't have to. I mean, initially, Fighter Factory only really accepted BMPs and PCXs, and PCXs were always more compatible, so it's completely up to you, but you could use either. Uh, call this the data 2, and close out saving, it's fine check my stuff folder and here they are so you basically just go through that process um, that's just about it I hope this helped someone alright thanks for watching